Welcome to the American Citizens Abroad podcast. I'm Michelle, and today I'm speaking with Michael Morris of the State Department Federal Credit Union about their banking services for Americans living and working overseas and the development of the ACA SDFCU account. Mary Louise Serrato, Executive Director of ACA, is also here with us. Welcome, Mike and Mary Louise. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Michelle. It's nice to be with you. Hi, Michelle. Mary- nice to be with you as well. Mary Louise, why don't we start with explaining why ACA and SDFCU developed the ACA-SDFCU account? Happy to. ACA started hearing from Americans overseas who were having their U.S.-based banking relationships closed or receiving limited servicing due to the fact that they no longer had a U.S. residential address. While ACA was addressing this at the legislative level with Congress, We also wanted to provide the community with an immediate solution. Part of the problem with the closure of accounts had to do with increased due diligence coming out of the Patriot Act. So we did and continue to address that with Congress, but again, wanted to find an immediate solution for people who needed to have US-based banking needs. So ACA reached out to the State Department Federal Credit Union because we knew that they were really the experts in helping U.S. State Department employees manage their U.S. financial needs while they were deployed overseas. And SDFCU has no problem with servicing Americans who no longer have a residential address in the U.S., and they're very familiar with this mobile population. We also knew that SDFCU had a wide range of products they could offer Americans overseas, and not just checking accounts and savings accounts. They had a full range of products. Mike, can you talk about credit unions in general and the history of SDFCU? Is it part of the U.S. State Department? Sure. SDFCU was chartered in 1935 as a federal credit union to primarily serve employees of the United States Department of State. So we have a long history of serving U.S. Foreign Service officers and ambassadors around the world. Over time, we've expanded our field of membership and the number of groups we serve, and we're happy to have recently added ACA and its members to our field of membership. Today, our asset size is over $1.9 billion, and we serve nearly 90,000 members worldwide. In fact, we have members living in almost every country around the world. And finally, we're considered well-managed and capitalized by our regulator, the National Credit Union Administration, or NCUA. I think you asked about the difference between banks and credit unions. So credit unions offer many of the same services, but may use different terminology. For example, certificates of deposit are called share certificates. Banks are typically owned by shareholders, where credit unions are owned by its members. Banks typically have a paid board of directors responsible to its shareholders. Credit unions boards are usually volunteers operating in the best interest of their members and of the credit union. Many credit unions operate under a low fee, no fee philosophy, where banks might spend a lot of money on television and radio advertising. Most credit unions spread awareness at a much lower cost through their relationship with the groups they serve. Banks are regulated by the FDIC and credit unions are regulated by the NCUA. Both are U.S. government agencies that also ensure respective deposits. And finally, credit unions are huge advocates of financial literacy and education. This was a key part of their charter from the very beginning of the credit union movement. For example, SDSU conducted over 95 free seminars and webinars last year on a wide range of topics in the areas of savings and investing, being a consumer, protecting yourself from identity theft, and making great decisions when buying a car or a home. What is the sign-up process like? How long does it take to open an account? The sign-up process is easy and only takes about 10 minutes. It can all be done online by first visiting the ACA website. There you'll find FAQs and a link to begin the application process. You will need to provide the usual due diligence information that you would need to open a bank account anywhere. 
If you reside overseas, this can be done online by providing a copy of your unexpired U.S. passport. You must be a U.S. citizen to apply and proof of residence, such as a copy of your lease agreement or a utility bill in your name and foreign addresses are accepted. A dedicated team at SBSCU processes these applications. The team is very familiar with the unique challenges of Americans overseas when trying to open a bank account, and they will reach out if additional information is needed. Applicants can expect a response generally within about five business days, if not sooner, and opening the account can take about 10 business days, depending on the quality and completeness of the documents and information provided at the time the application was submitted. Do those looking to open an account need to provide translations of foreign documents like their lease or utility bill? It's helpful, but not necessary. What about spouses? Is it possible to open a joint account if one person is an ACA member, but their spouse isn't? And what about non-U.S. spouses? A non-U.S. spouse can be a joint owner of the account of the American member, but cannot hold his or her own account. The spouse does not need to be a member of ACA as long as the primary account holder is. Sounds like the product is a real lifesaver for Americans overseas. How do most Americans overseas use their accounts? What products are they using? Well, of our members who have joined through ACA, 58% are using our basic checking account. Another 18% have an interest checking account. 21% have either a money management account, which is the equivalent of a money market account, a share certificate, or a basic IRA. 29% have an SDSCU credit card. And by the way, our credit cards have no annual fee, no foreign transaction fees, and they carry low rates. These cards work with Apple Pay and Google Wallet and are configured pin priority to work in most kiosks that you might find, for example, in train stations and at other vendors in Europe and in other countries. I know ACA has heard from Americans overseas who have had their IRAs and 401ks frozen or have been told they will be liquidated. Can SDFCU help with this and provide rollovers of those accounts? Yes, many ACA members are coming to us for this very reason. I'm aware of a couple of instances where individuals told us they received a check from their previous institution with no prior notice, and then only had 60 days to roll it over from the date it was issued. SDSU can provide rollovers to traditional or Roth IRAs, and within those IRA accounts, funds can be placed into savings accounts or certificates with a slightly higher yield. We've all heard how important it is for one's credit history to maintain some financial visibility in the U.S., especially for those who plan to move back stateside at some point. Does an SDFCU credit card help with that? Yes, having and using an SDFCU credit card will help to build a U.S.-based credit history. There are a couple of ways we can help. Many applicants can qualify for a credit card with a starting credit limit of $500. Now, I realize this amount can be a little frustrating as many ACA members may have a stellar credit rating abroad, but this is a starting point if there's no U.S.-based credit history. We also have a savings secured credit card where the credit limit is secured by the amount in your savings account. Both types are great options for building or improving your credit while enjoying the convenience of using a credit card that works all over the world. ACA is working to change tax law, but in the meantime, Americans living overseas still need to file tax returns. Some will need to pay and some will get a refund. How does your product help with this? Payments and refunds can be submitted electronically. And when you submit your U.S. tax return, simply provide the SDFCU ABA routing number and your SDFCU checking account number. And when it comes to Social Security payments, is it possible to receive them through an SDFCU account? Yes, and very conveniently and like tax payments and refunds. Specify with the Social Security Administration you would like to receive your payments electronically and provide them the SDFCU ABA routing number and your SDFCU checking account number. Is it easy to transfer funds from an SDFCU account to one's foreign bank? Is it quick? Can SDFCU work with most foreign banking institutions? Yes, this is typically done via wire transfer, 
We have a SWIFT code to simplify international wire transfers. Our fees for outgoing domestic and international wires are some of the lowest in the industry, and we do not charge a fee to process incoming wires. We're also exploring additional technology that could enable transfers between foreign banks and SDFCU faster and at a lower cost. And does the SDFCU app work when someone is overseas? Well, this varies greatly by country, app store, and availability, but it's really important to know that our digital banking platform can be accessed from any device, your desktop, laptop, or smartphone. We use responsive technology, so screens, tabs, and buttons scale to the size of the device you're using to make it easy to view and easy to use. From there, you can access your accounts, move money, apply for additional products, and even deposit checks using a scanner or the camera in your device. Mary Louise, what do you hear from those abroad about their U.S. financial needs? What else does the community need? Well, in addition to a lot of what Mike just explained, we also hear from individuals who are dealing with elder care issues, having to manage, say, their parents or an elder family member's care from distance. The SDFCU account gives them the ability to do that, to pay bills for family members and manage care. Not only are we hearing about elder care management, but we are also hearing from individuals who have children in the U.S. at university or in education and internships, summer camps, and they need to manage their children's expenses. Additionally, we hear from people with property investments in the U.S. and small businesses that they are managing from distance. Mike can probably tell you more about how SDFCU can help with these. Many service providers in the U.S., including schools and universities, only accept payments in U.S. dollars, and some have even converted to accepting only electronic payments from a U.S.-based financial institution. The SDFCU checking account can be used for all of this. And we continue to come across new scenarios. We recently enrolled an ACA member who is residing in Europe and working for a U.S. company. The company pays all its employees only through electronic payroll deposit into U.S.-based financial institutions. So this person was very happy to have found ACA and SDFCU, and this is how they're receiving their paycheck. And SDFCU also provides mortgages. How do Americans overseas qualify for an SDFCU mortgage? SDFCU offers many mortgage options for members living overseas. The property must be located in the U.S., and you can pre-qualify for home purchases through our online application, and there is no application fee. What about rates and fees? How does SDFCU compare with traditional banks? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we have some of the lowest international wire transfer fees in the industry. There are no monthly fees on our checking accounts and savings accounts. There are no annual fees or foreign transaction fees on our credit cards. And our rates are very competitive on all our products. Mary Louise, is ACA involved in any way with the sign-up process for accounts? Well, Michelle, ACA as an organization is able to provide access to this fantastic product. However, all account openings are managed directly with SDFCU and their staff. ACA is not privy to, nor do we have any access to any personal information. From time to time, individuals will contact ACA with questions about SDFCU, and we forward those on to SDFCU. SDFCU has a fantastic dedicated team working just on ACA members' issues, and really, they're great. They get a four-star review. Thanks, Mary Louise. We feel like we have a great program, but things are always changing on the regulatory front that affects the needs of Americans living abroad and in the technology we can deploy to help. We have an energetic executive management team and a board of directors with tremendous experience serving Americans living overseas, and they offer great vision and terrific support of our teams. I think we all thrive on operating in a continuous state of learning how we can become better at serving all our members and particularly those living overseas. So we love getting these questions from ACA. Since it's changed our lives in the past few weeks, I need to ask, how beneficial is an SDFCU account when it comes to emergencies like COVID-19? 
Well, I was in a team meeting this week and heard stories of members using their SDSU accounts to send money to relatives in hard hit areas. Uh, we're also able to assist members in some instances with deferrals on certain existing loan payments or waive certain fees due to hardship caused by COVID-19. What is ACA doing for the community in regards to COVID-19 and the CARES Act? So, Michelle, ACA is working to ensure that Americans overseas are treated fairly under the new Coronavirus Aid Relief Economic Security Act, CARES Act. And we also want to ensure that Americans overseas are able to receive their recovery rebate. For this, they'll need a U.S.-based bank account, and SDFCU is a U.S.-based bank account, so that could be very helpful. It certainly sounds like SDFCU is something that every American overseas should consider. In closing, do either of you have any final thoughts? I think ACA does amazing work for its members and for all Americans living overseas. SDSU is proud to partner with them on this program that's proving to be beneficial for so many. Michelle, every American overseas or those who are living in the U.S. and travel extensively, live part-time overseas, or maybe considering moving overseas should really become a member of ACA and open an SDSU account. Many Americans who moved overseas years ago never anticipated that at some point legislation and regulations like the Patriot Act and some foreign legislation would impact their ability to maintain a U.S. financial base. SDFCU guarantees that you will always have access to U.S. financial tools, whether you are living or traveling overseas. Plus, the SDFCU staff and customer service are the best in town. Like I said before, they have gotten an A-plus rating from our members, so I encourage everyone who's listening to this podcast to sign up for an SDFCU account today. Just go to the ACA website. I think Michelle will probably provide that in the show notes. I will, for sure. Thanks, Mike and Mary Louise, for taking the time to chat with us today. The American Citizens Abroad podcast is a monthly podcast that is published the second Tuesday of each month. It is edited and produced by me, Michelle, and is a product of American Citizens Abroad. You can find us on Twitter at ACA underscore podcast, on Facebook at American Citizens Abroad podcast, or you can email us at podcast at americansabroad.org. Remember, give us a good rating on Apple Podcasts so other Americans living abroad can find us. 